We constantly hear about head coverings and especially hijab as signs of female oppression. But the truth is, is that different traditions have very different ways, places, and reasons for men and women to cover their head. In this video, we're going to hear about the different types of head coverings worn by religious men and women and hear about what it means for each person. So my, my mother does not cover her hair. Okay, she doesn't she doesn't wear hijab. So I grew up with a female figure in the house who 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 doesn't wear hijab or she would only cover her hair when when she would pray, right? The five daily prayers. I, on the other hand, um, decided to wear hijab when I was a teenager, you know, um, and so therefore I started covering my head whenever I was out in public, basically. My parents are not necessarily regular churchgoers. But when they do go, um, you dress up to go to church. And that involves men wearing hats and women wearing hats. My father would always remove his and my mother would keep hers on. This has not really affected the way I cover my head because it's a sort of mixture of cultural, practical and, and respect for the religious space. So I come from a uh, non-traditional, non-Orthodox family. Uh, I became religious during my teenage years. Um, and so my mother did not cover her hair at all and wore a hat, as was customary uh, in synagogue. Um, in terms of affecting my own choices, obviously they were all made independently. Um, I think it was quite hard for my mum, actually, uh, when I cover my hair. Um, but in general, they've been very positive and very supportive about my choices. It's not usual for people to cover their heads uh, for religious reason. In, in my country, if they are just lay people. I remember my grandmother, she always covered her head by veil when she, when she went to the church, but she always did it if she went out. It was a custom for that generation to cover their head with a veil. And for, for us now, it looks a bit outdated uh, because people don't do it anymore. I'm the only one who covers the, my head uh, but it's also because I'm a religious sister. My parents don't cover their head, neither my mother or my father, and he doesn't wear a head covering. Um, but it was something I think being friends with a lot of people who grew up wearing it outside, I then decided that it was something that I wanted to do as well. Um, they're very respectful of me doing it. Um, and I'm also very respectful of the fact that they don't wear it. I won't cover my head, but I will often cover my shoulders and neck. Um, so I'll like, sort of loosely drape uh, a scarf around me. And that is again, something that my mum does and sort of you know, reminds me of um, quite regularly. Um, and this is, again, I would say something that's just a kind of social practice within my family. But it's also for me, I've realized in recent years, a way of making me feel more connected to my culture. There's so much meaning that comes with a head covering, right? Um, and for me, it really became a big part of my identity that I was a hijabi. I was a hijabi woman in America. I was a hijabi when my mother was not a hijabi, you know? So it was very much a, a personal choice for me for many years. And it still is, of course, but it's just that my, maybe my ideas about the hijab have, have changed a little bit. When I enter a church, I remove whatever hat or covering I have. And I do this out of respect for what I believe is the real presence of God in that building as, as, a, as a way of, again, as a way of showing respect. So the head covering is a matter of choice for me because uh, I joined a religious order when I was 25 and the veil is a part of our religious cult the head covering isn't very usual. People, people cover heads only for practical or fashion reasons. So when they see religious um, or people from other societies covering their head, it's not very usual for them. Uh, and it's a very clear message that we are religious. I cover my head every day. I'm wearing my kippah now, which is a head covering um, that I wear when I go out of the house and when I'm in the house. Um, for me, it's a sign 
that I'm a Jewish man. Um, and it's important for me to have that on show to everyone else. And as much as that, it also reminds me of that responsibility of being viewed as such in front of everyone else at the same time. I cover my head uh, all the time when I'm outside of my home and I cover my head when I'm inside of my home and I have male guests who are not members of my family. Uh, I do it because I feel that it is a halachic requirement. Um, but I also do feel that that halachic requirement has a spectrum of opinions. Um, and this is at the moment uh, where I'm comfortable. Uh, probably as you can see through the video, uh, I leave a little bit of my hair out. Uh, I've only done that for about the past five years. I think when I first got married, I uh, covered all my hair all of the time. Red and white. Okay, so I do cover my head um, when I pray and also when I enter a mosque. Um, so not just entering a mosque to pray, but also if I'm just sort of looking around or, or just wanting to sit and reflect, I will cover my head. And it's also about habit as well. So I grew up seeing my mum, my aunties, my cousins doing so almost spontaneously, you know, that the head covering would just just come on in certain at certain points. And so I sort of, I suppose, soaked that up, that that impulse um, to to cover my head in these particular um, spaces.